Good day, everyone. Welcome back to my little home workshop. My name's Aaron. Now, today's video, I thought I'd continue with the shop math series, and uh, the reason I'm doing that is because I need to cut some gears over here on my milling machine. And I thought, well, this might make a great opportunity to show those out there how to use your dividing head and how to work out the divisions to cut your gears. Now, the dividing I'm doing here today is called simple indexing. Now, don't get simple indexing confused with direct indexing. Direct indexing is when you use the degree reel around the, uh, the dividing head, which is, on the, which is attached to the spindle, and you can quite easily pick up, you know, if you were doing a hexagon, you know, divisions of six. Uh, simple indexing is where we use the indexing plates, the sector arms. Now, to cover this for you today, I'm going to actually take you back to the computer and do a voiceover so I can actually show you the math a bit easy. Then I'll bring you back to the shop and I'll actually demonstrate the divisions by using a felt pen or a Sharpie on top of my job so you guys can see how it works. In an upcoming video, I'll actually do the gear cutting and show you. I can't show you the gear cutting today because um, the gear the involute gear cutters that I bought don't fit my horizontal arbor. So I've got to make a, uh, an, another arbor to go in a collet chuck. Now I had a shop sticker come in this week and it's from Steve over at the Outback Shed. Uh, Steve is a, another Aussie uh, garage machinist like myself and he does some interesting content. So why don't you pop over to Steve's channel and check it out. Uh, one thing I like about his channel, that his, his shop is very, very neat, clean and tidy, and I love that sort of stuff. Um, unfortunately, my shop's not up to scratch at the moment, but um, you can't beat having a, a clean machine and a clean workshop. So, Steve, your sticker's up on the board, mate. Thank you. I also did a community post as well. So, check out my sticker board here, guys. Um, if you like machining contact, check out some of these other creators. They do some interesting work as well. Well, I've brought you over to my uh, laptop here to show you some examples. So what I've got for you here, guys, this is a large um, winch gear out of one of the projects that we do with our students uh, when I was working at the TAFE sector teaching apprentices. And this large gear, they have to make that out of cast and uh, it involves quite a bit of uh, manual machining detail there. Right, now it is. Uh, it has 56 teeth, so let's go and have a look at the drawing on this one now. So here's the drawing. It's um, I've just made this quickly for you so you guys can see. Now, to work this out, this is, uh, as I was saying before, 56 teeth. Now, your dividing head, uh, whether it's a brown and sharp type or whatever, they roughly take 40 turns to 1 revolution. So when I'm using this numerical value of 40, you know what that means. So 40 turns for one revolution. So let's have a look here. We'll bring this down. So to work this out today, 40 turns on top, you have to do it as a fraction into 56. Now we know that if uh, 8 will divide equally into 40 and 56. Um, so as we come down here, you'll see where I get 5 over 7. Of course, 5 eighths are 40, 7 eighths are 56, and that's how we... Uh, reduce that fraction down. Now, unfortunately, my dividing plates that we have here, we don't have seven holes. So I know that we've got a 21 hole plate. So we'd multiply the numerator and the denominator by three, and we'd end up with 15 over 21. Now, what does that mean? So that means 15 divisions on a 21 hole plate. So you'd have to fit your 21 hole plate to the dividing head and then set your sector arms to 15 divisions. And of course, when you start off in the first pin, you don't count that first hole, you count the next one. Right, so there's one example for you. Now we'll go to a little bit harder. Let's bring it up. And this is the winch ratchet gear. So I'll show you what that looks like. So on our next example here is the winch ratchet gear. Now this is not traditionally a gear as such, as you can see here, because it doesn't involve using the involute cutter. But to cut this here, we'd use a single edge cutter in a horizontal mill, and a 70 degree that is, to get this profile. Now let's take a look at the drawing quickly, and you can see it over here. It has 15 of these ratchet pawls, and you can see they're 70 degrees offset, the depth of cut is 6.17 and the width of the top is 2. 
So when we look at this here now, we can have a look at it. So once again, there's our 40 value. Remember that 40 is how many turns does it take for one revolution on your dividing head? Divided by N, the number of gears or teeth, whatever it is you've got to cut. So in this instance, it's 15. Now this one's a little bit more trickier. This fraction presented to you like this is a improper fraction and we need to bring it down to make it a proper fraction. And to reduce that down here, we can see that with that fraction down properly, we can see it's two over two thirds. Okay, and now we don't have a dividing plate with three pin, you know, three hole plates. So we've got to find another plate. Now in our previous example, we used a 21 hole plate and guess what? 21 will go into that denominator, won't it? So if we go three times seven, it gives us three sevens of 21. Whatever I do to the denominator, I've got to do the, the numerator. So you can see down here, two times seven, three times seven, and it gives us 14. So two sevens of 14, three sevens of 21. So what does that equate to on our divider plate? So we have to rotate that handle two full turns and 14 divisions on a 21 hole plate. Righto, here we go. So now we're gonna work on the little um, four stroke engine gear. We'll just return this one back to where it was. And here's our little four stroke engine gear. And this is what I'll be cutting in a upcoming video for you. And here's our drawing on the left hand side. I've tried to increase, uh, include a lot of detail in this drawing when I'm making it. So you will get everything outlined to us. So on this one, once again, we have our 40 and our 40 is going to be divided by 22 teeth. And what does that equate to? So that gives us 1 and 9 over 11. Now sadly I don't have a, in my dividing head, I don't have um, 11 hole plate. I don't even have a 22 hole plate. I do have a 23 hole plate which I can pick up here. So if we look at this here, we can amend that. So 9 times 3 equals 27. 11 times 3 is 33 and so that's going to be when we're dividing this today it's going to be one full turn and 27 divisions on a 33 hole plate so let's pop on over to the milling machine and take a look at this so for me here today i'm going to be dropping that pin Setting this up here, I like to put my finger there so I know where I'm going. I always rotate clockwise, so here we go. I'm going to go one full turn, then I'm going to take my divisions. And my plate's just a little bit out of the way there, and there we go. Now the trick here is to remember to straight away to set your sector fingers straight away so you don't forget. And we can take the second cut or first cut, whatever. Well, that's all I've got for you today, ladies and gentlemen. I, I hope you enjoyed the video. And moreover, I hope you took something away from it. I hope you learned something and able to apply it in your shop. Now, with any of my videos, I'm not telling you how it should be done. I'm showing you an example on how to do it, okay? It's not a definitive guide on you must do it this way, the way Aaron says. Please don't take it that way. I'm just sharing my experiences with you along the way. You probably don't know this, but I'm actually a... I have two trades. My original trade was a motor mechanic, and then I jumped ship into engineering, became a maintenance fitter. Now, after that, I pursued a academic life, and I went to university and became a school teacher and been teaching high school shops, so woodwork, metalwork, electronics, engineering. Uh, I also teach vocational education, so I have two trades, so I can either teach automotive or I can teach engineering, which is good because I can flip-flop. Um, 
But yeah, look, it's uh, I'm guys, you'll never learn everything. Uh, my old friend Peter Pilbeam, he says, look, Aaron, the bloke that's never made a mistake has never made anything. And uh, we continue learning on our journey. And an example of that is when I did the pipe threading uh, a couple of weekends ago, um, I'd forgot to... I forgot to account for the wall thickness. And now I'd cut pipe in my apprenticeship on the old uh, rigid pipe cutting machines, but that's over 40 years ago. And I'd forgotten that with pipe, it's the ID measurement, not the OD measurement that specifies, uh, you know, the size of the pipe. So anyway, uh, we keep learning, guys, as we go along. We forget things as we go along as well. In closing, I want to thank and welcome all my new subscribers that have jumped on board. Now, I'm currently um, over 6,000 subscribers on this channel, and I've been doing a lot of work with this channel lately because I, I seem to be enjoying it more. Uh, you probably don't know this, but I have two channels. One's got more subscribers, but um, it's, I show different work on that one. Anyway, look, welcome aboard. Thank you, and uh, I need to thank Max Grant for that. Max Grant gave me a shout-out, and I got a lot of subscribers from that shout-out, so thank you, Max. Guys, have a lovely day. Uh, Enjoy. I've got my family coming over now, so I'm going to go inside and wait for the little buggers to turn up, uh, the grandkids, that is. Have a lovely day. See you on the next video. Bye for now. Well, I've come to my first problem here today making this video, and uh, I thought it would be an excellent video to use this horizontal arbor, and I'll just pan across and show you. still got its packing grease on it, so I take it it's never been used, but guess what? It's a one inch arbor. Let's have a look. One inch and my involute gear cutter is 22 millimeters. So that ain't gonna work.